Joshin. I'm from the States originally, born in San Francisco, raised around the LA area. Till about high school, then moved to New York, upstate, okay. went to school there. Yeah. That was for college, yeah, studied a few languages, Spanish, French, Chinese, and music. And then after that, I was in New York City, started working in food and beverage for a few years, then moved to China for one year, and now we're in Tokyo, in Shibuya. That's, where we're That's right a lot of places. Yeah. Do any of them feel like home to you? Um, some more than others. If anything, I think New York and Tokyo feel more like home. My mother is from the States. She grew up in the Bay Area. And then my father's side is Japanese. They live in Fukuoka, which okay. is in Kyushu. It's in the south of Japan. Could you tell us a bit more about your family in the south of Japan? We run a Buddhist temple okay. um, as a family. My uncle is the sort of temple minister. There's a couple different types of temples in Japanese Buddhism. I guess some could be more thought of as somewhere that monks will go to train for their own spiritual development, for their own sort of Buddhist development. Others are more focused around services and we fall into that category. Okay. So we, we essentially run a Buddhist temple and a nursery school. It was one of the biggest single influences on my upbringing and my lifestyle because the reason I have been coming to Japan every year of my life was mostly because of these several periods of the year where it's very busy at the temple. One of them is kind of similar to the Day of the Dead tradition in Mexico. It's kind of a Buddhist tradition and a Japanese cultural tradition. This is called Obon and tends to be a very busy period for mm -hmm. a lot of temples because there's a lot of services involved. When you return back to the States mm -hmm. from visiting, mm -hmm. did you find that you were living a, almost two different lives in a way. Did you find any difficulty with doing both and balancing both? This dichotomy or like duality uh, is very much the central question I have had to confront throughout my life because it's very confusing. There's like the California sort of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I was playing baseball and going to school like regular and hanging out with friends mm -hmm. and and then there was this very sort of strict temple life. Right. But since I'm half Japanese and I don't look fully Japanese, for the people who saw me in the temple context outside of my family, it was always a, a kind of a question mark for them as well, like where I fall into mm -hmm. that situation. Did you speak Japanese at the house or was it just English inside the house? Exclusively Japanese. It was like the law, I would say. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we weren't uh, permitted to use English in the house. And the last language, if I may call it a language, music. Mm -hmm. um, are there specific instruments you play? I play a little bit of percussion. It's called an asolato, and it's a West African instrument. Two sort of shaker balls attached with a string, so you can click them together also. Did you ever want to pursue it in a career sense, or? Yeah, I, I still do. That is basically why I'm here right okay. now. I've always been interested in pairing flavor and sound. So as opposed to doing like a wine and food pairing, mm -hmm. um, I would like to actually pair that experience with a sonic mm. sort of experience. So what brought you to Japan? Well, the, the trigger that sort of brought me here was a, a new bar that we were going to open in Shibuya. The same organization opened a bar in Shanghai. That's why I went there to help for a year with the opening. And then right around when my visa was running out, they decided they were going to open a bar in Tokyo. I took that as sort of the right time, right place kind of thing and moved over here. Is it a team you work with? Several guys that I've been working with for a while. I worked with back in New York. And now this is a company. We run four bars, a bar tools store, a sort of import-export business for bar tools between China and Japan, and a couple more projects down the road. Could you tell us a bit of what it's been like for you uh, as a young person just living in Tokyo in 2019? 
I think living in a country versus visiting a country is always very different. Once you get into the daily cycle, what you sort of see as a visitor in some ways disappear. Hmm. And you look at your city more in terms of your neighborhood, the, the commute path. So there's plenty of things about Tokyo, for example, that I never experienced because of my nighttime lifestyle. And most sort of eye opening part of this experience is how much my micro culture, like the lifestyle that immediately surrounds me, really dictates my whole life more so than which country I'm living in.、Mm -hmm. yeah. I think for people our age, you have a very interesting perspective that you've lived many places, whether it be New York, Shanghai, or Tokyo. Can you afford to live in any of those cities by yourself, or do you feel you need roommates or a, a girlfriend to split costs with? I think in any of those cities, it matters how much you're making,、mm -hmm. uh, what kind of job you have. I did always have a lot of roommates in every city, and I do live with my girlfriend here. It is affordable to live on your own in Tokyo. There is a very developed train system, so、mm -hmm. people can live quite far away and still arrive to work within a reasonable amount of time.、Um, you could be 30 minutes away from work on a train and be twice the distance away because of the different express trains and stuff. Is it, a, is it a common thing to see people out all night here because they made the decision not to take the last train and wait till the morning? Yes.、Yeah. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever been.、Uh, wait. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, I know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> so you had mentioned that you do stay here with your girlfriend. Do you guys split costs of living, or is there a way you work that out? I think, in terms of money, we're, we're a pretty open couple. Um, we share a lot、mm -hmm. and we don't really count like dollar to dollar how much one owes another.、Mm -hmm. um, in terms of rent, I pay about 80%, she pays about 20%, mostly because I was looking for an apartment regardless of whether she was going to move、I、in、see. or not. And so I had already decided on the spot, including the, the size of the place, the location, and the rent. In terms of when we go out, I think we just naturally trade off paying for each other. Uh, we don't really like to split on the spot.、Um, I, I, I get that. I, I'm very similar. What led you to this job in particular, working with food and beverage in Shibuya? I've always loved. Eating and drinking,、mm -hmm. and spending time with people.、Mm -hmm. My mother took me as my 21st birthday to this really nice restaurant where everything from the service to the atmosphere to the, the meals, like the actual dishes that came、mm -hmm. out, were pretty much perfect. Except the radio was playing as the background music for the restaurant,、mm -hmm. and you're hearing these advertisements、uh, as you're eating. Some of the most carefully crafted dishes in the world. There is some space for improvement even、mm -hmm. in this three star、uh, sort of atmosphere. It inspired me to want to do flavor and sound pairings. What does money mean to you? It's something that makes me think quite often、um, in my decision making, and it's something that Really propels our lifestyle and、mm -hmm. also holds us back in many ways. I feel like it is a form of energy that we expend because、uh, when I'm very low on like financial flexibility,、mm -hmm. it's very stressful and it、right. feels kind of like being low on physical energy in a way. I think it has a lot to do with living in a big city because when you're in a city, you depend on a lot of services. I'm working on figuring out a good balance. What does success mean to you? I guess it's,、uh, it's not a one off thing.、Mm -hmm. It's not about achieving it and then dropping the mic and leaving、mm -hmm. the stage. To me, it has a lot to do with the broad sense of sustainability. If I can just use $100,000 and go on one vacation and come back and have to find a cardboard box to live in from scratch, I don't think that. Was necessarily a sustainable trip、mm -hmm. per se. Finding a balance between saving and spending on a big occasion or how much to invest in experiences、mm -hmm. is, is hard to calculate、mm -hmm. on a spreadsheet your return on experience. 
you sort of have to listen to your heart in a way it sounds very cheesy yeah there there isn't a one right answer i think yeah and when it when it gets stressful um that's part of the experience and then you get creative about how to get out of that situation i tend to enjoy most of that process